Hello and welcome back to the TorontoWebsiteDeveloper.com. I am Peter Yorsky, the Toronto Website Developer specializing in Drupal. And in this third video tutorial on Drupal 8, I want to introduce you to a number of different things, um, specifically around debugging um, and how you're going to work with Drupal 8 in a development environment when you're going to be running into problems. So specifically, I want to show you um, some problems around mod rewrite on our server. I want to show you what happens when we install a development module and things go south quickly. Um, I want to show you a problem with xdebug that you might not necessarily be ready for. And then just finally, I'm going to show you how we can get comments enabled on uh, the, I think it's the, one of the basic nodes, um, but it's not there. And so I want to show you that um, and we'll get rolling. So before we do that, you want know, some over at torontowebsitedeveloper.com slash store. Here you can purchase my video tutorial series as I complete them. Uh, I don't always get them up on time. Uh, for sale, but each sale does support me in continuing to develop these tutorials, keep them free and keep them frequent. So each tutorial is only $20. Uh, if you can't afford the $20 but want to help out, please just leave a thumbs up or a comment on YouTube. Both are greatly appreciated and help to promote these videos to other Drupal users. Now, with all that said, let's get back over to our D8 sandbox site. And first thing I want to show you is if I go to content here, I'm going to get a 404. And uh, if you just upgraded WAMP like I did, you might have this same problem. The reason why this happens is because we don't have a Apache module enabled, which rewrites our URLs. So PHP uses like question mark equals in the URL. And so, um, but you'll see my site here with the Drupal setup is actually looking for down at the bottom, uh, admin content, right? No question mark equals. So that is a problem. So uh, you'll notice here on my toolbar, you should be able to see this. Uh, I'm just gonna go into a, a Apache here, Apache modules. Scroll way down here to where I see rewrite. And so it's the rewrite module, check that off. WAMP will restart itself. And when we come back green, if I click on this page, I'm now good to go. So that's debugging problem number one. If you're on Linux and you're having the same problem, just do a Linux rewrite module here. You'll see a stack overflow question that'll actually walk you through how to fix everything. Um, this rewrite stuff, if you actually look at the uh, drupal.ht access, if you know what I'm talking about there, you just go into your uh, site root and you just vim.ht access and you go, where are we here? Let's just look for rewrite. I'm not trying to. So you can see the rewrite engine is on if module, if we have the module. So I now have the module turned on and so it has all the stuff that we needed to have for the rules and whatnot. So, um, oops. Yes, actually I do. Um, so that's how the rewrite will work for you. So let's get rid of this page. Now, in all my other Drupal video tutorials, you notice that I like to use a module called the admin menu, which has this nice drop down so I can get into deep um, menu items without actually having to go to each one of them. So, like if I click on structure here, I then have to go into content types and then go into manage fields and all that kind of stuff. There's admin menu, it was nice J, uh, JavaScript that I could just hover over and it would open everything up. So if I go over to drupal.org slash project slash admin menu and I scroll down, you notice that there is no D8 version here. There's nothing referenced. And so you can go into version control and here you can go version to work from. You can see, oh, there's a D8 version. And so you can click show. And I'm going to grab this, this cloning stuff here. Now, before you actually do that, you might want to go into all the issues open and see if there's a status update on Drupal 8. Um, I didn't do this before, and that's how I found out that it was, doesn't work. But if you click on here, you can see all that's going on. So there's some critical fails, and they need some work. So really, if anyone's interested in helping out, this is a great place to start. You can see here's what needs to happen um, and to get it going. So Let's pretend like we didn't see this and we wanted to use a development module. I would go into my site here and I go into CD modules and then I would just paste in this code for get clone. So I'm going to clone this. We cloned last time. Uh, or no, we used Rush. So never mind. So now we have it. If I go to uh, admin menu, you'll see that I have the module. And so I can go into extend. Normally I would do this with Drush, but I just want to, I know some people don't always use Drush. So here, I'm just going to type in admin and you'll see I've got this admin menu so I can go ahead and I can save this configuration. And now you'll see that I've actually pooched the site, right? I've got this fatal error called undefined function user access in the admin menu on line 202. And so now if you're scratching your head, what you might want to do is go over to api.drupal.org 
And so you want to check out user access. So we'll search this and you'll see that there is no reference to Drupal 8. That's because user access actually doesn't exist in Drupal 8. And so uh, the way that you would figure that out is hopefully some helpful person has provided a Drupal 8 comment. So I just type uh, control F, look for Drupal 8, and you'll come down and let's look for the other ones. So here, she's actually provided this nice comment three months ago that user access got uh, converted to a method on the user slash account interface. That's object oriented, something we're gonna have to get to in future video tutorials. But now there is no user access anymore. So as a result, you'll see here replaced by account interface has permission. That is the method you're going to use. So, whereas in Drupal 7, we used to do user access, now you have to do this current user has permission, such and such. We're not fixing admin menu right now. That's something for another tutorial. So as a result, what we wanna do is get this off of our site. So what I would try to do is go back to, can I get to admin menu? Or sorry, the admin modules. No, I can't. So this is where Drush comes in super handy. So I'm just gonna go up a level here and just gonna go Drush uh, P, uh, let's do disable first, admin menu, because in Drupal 7, that's what you would do. You would try to disable it. And so it says Drupal 8 doesn't support disabling modules. So that's another key caveat. You don't disable modules in Drupal 8. So we're gonna do Drush PM uninstall admin menu. Yes, we really will do it. And now we're gonna see that we have this called undefined function variable delete. That's on line 22 of the admin menu with that install. So we are obviously gonna to have to change something to get this off of our site. So we're gonna go admin menu dot install and let's check it out. Okay, so we can see that on the uninstall, admin menu is deleting a bunch of variables, but the method for variable delete does not actually work. It doesn't exist in Drupal 8. So let's go ahead and delete that. And now we can go and do the same thing again. And yes, let's do that. And there we go, successfully uninstalled. You might be wondering why variable delete doesn't exist. You can jump over to uh, api.drupal.org and search it out. Um, I was going to make a wild guess, but uh, what I think is, so in, in Drupal 8, what we've done is gone to YAML files. And so because of that, uh, not everything's in the database, so you don't have this Drupal de uh, variable delete. And so let's just check, it's not actually referenced. Just go with that. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's the reason. Everything's a YAML file, it's not a database file, so you don't have this, uh, this reference to the database and all the rest of it. Um, so yeah, so that's how we've gotten a development module, screwed up our site, got that development module out of there. And now if we go back here, you'll see that we are actually good to go. Perfect. So now what we want to do is we want to create some content and I believe it's here. If we go to basic page, huh, it actually worked. Bear with me for a second here because what did I, okay. So what I'm going to do here is you would not have had this line. So I'm going to save that. And I'm just going to close this. And I did not want you to see this. So what I'm going to do is Reload WAMP, and I'm gonna go back here, and it didn't work. Okay, so what I was trying to show you was, um, you might get this error when you're working on things. Um, that happened for me, it's an xDebug error. And what it says is that, um, you know, you've gone too far past this um, function limit or something like that. Um, and so what ends up happening is a quick Google search will tell you that down your xDebug uh, settings here, you want to extend the max nesting level. So you'll get an error that says something about you've exceeded the max nesting level. Um, and so it's something about it being 100. So you'll just add this line xDebug dot max underscore nesting underscore level equals 200. And so you would save that. Now your PHP has that restart WAMP and you would be good to go. Perfect. So now I'm going to show you just quickly how we can create content with some uh, comments. Previously in Drupal 7, you would go to basics page and you might have a reference to comments here. And you would get that by going to structure, going to content, oops, going to content types, and you would click on edit for content types. 
in the basic page and you'd have reference here to, you know, enabling comments and that kind of thing. You can see it's gone. It doesn't exist here. That's because it's a little bit different in Drupal 8. You're going to go to manage fields and we're going to add a field and we are going to create comments. And so we'll just create, uh, I don't know, comments or something. I don't even know if this is right, to be honest with you. We should really check out what the article page does. So let's go ahead and open this up. Let's go to content types, because I believe articles actually have it. If we go to manage fields, you can see there's comments, and then there's comment, and then the field type is actually comment. And so it looks like we're on the right path. So let's go ahead and do this. So um, default comments, uh, find it everywhere I use, setting it back, yeah. Set the comments you want, uh, limited number of values. Sure, let's just go ahead and leave it at one. Okay, so you get a comments. It's open. This is this looks like we're on the right path. And here's we're gonna have threaded 50 comments per page, uh, optional preview. Let's go ahead and save that. So this looks good. So I haven't lied to you. Uh, so there we go. Now I've got field comments. So I'm gonna go back over to content. I'm going to add content, and I'm gonna add a basic page. And this is going to be, uh, I don't know, Pete's uh, comment test. Just enabled comments, right? And we'll see here, we've got comment settings, open, close. So we'll leave that open, that's good. We'll save and publish. And now you'll see we've got this nice comment form down here. So that's it for this video tutorial. Um, a couple of key things I wanted to walk you through. One, mod rewrite. Two, getting development modules. Three, what happens when you pooch your site with development modules. Four, what happens when xdebug throws you the max, max nesting level error, which we didn't actually see, but you know how to fix in case you do. And five, how do you get comments enabled on your new content types? That's it for this video tutorial. Hopefully it helped you. Uh, if it did, leave a comment or a thumbs up. Greatly appreciate those, and we'll see you for the next tutorial. Thanks very much for watching.